There's a new comet in the night sky that is set to become naked eye visible. It's the best time of year to capture the zodiacal light. We say farewell to the Milky Way core. Aurora season opens in the northern hemisphere and we also have a super harvest moon. Welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky for September 2023 and we have a new comet in the sky right now. On August the 11th, a new comet was discovered by Japanese amateur astronomer Hideo Nishimura. Its official name is C2023 P1 Nishimura. It's currently in the constellation Cancer and can be spotted for a few hours before dawn. At the moment it's around magnitude plus 6.7 so it's not quite naked eye visible yet but it is getting brighter and it does appear to have a long faint ion tail. It will soon pass into the constellation Leo and could reach magnitude plus 4.8 by around September the 8th, making it naked eye visible. And this is probably the best time to try and spot it. Around the 13th, it switches from being an evening target to a morning target. It reaches perihelion, its closest approach to the sun on September the 17th. And around this time, it might be as bright as 2.8. But as it will be close to the sun in the sky, it could be very difficult to spot and you only have a limited time to see it after the sun has set. On the 17th, you might be able to spot it on the western horizon with a thin crescent moon and Mars. But this is assuming that the comet survives its trip around the sun because when it gets close to the sun, it might just start disintegrating. And it also needs to be bright enough to be visible in the twilight hours. So keep an eye out for it to see if it survives its trip around the sun. In sadder news, it's the last good month to get a photograph of the Milky Way core. In the Northern Hemisphere, it can be found in the Southwest after sunset, but then sets itself shortly afterwards. This leaves the Great Rift, a dark dust lane of the Milky Way, standing vertically on the horizon, which is still very much worth photographing, so it's not the end of the world. Those in the Southern Hemisphere have a much better view of the Milky Way and can even photograph the core next month. During September, it can be found in the West after sunset and it sinks parallel with the horizon as it sets. With the setting of the Milky Way comes the rising of the winter constellation, so familiar faces like Orion, Taurus and Gemini can now be found rising in the East just before before sunrise. September brings us the second equinox of the year, a day of roughly equal length of day and night all around the world. And it's also this time of year that it's the best time to see and photograph the zodiacal light. This faint triangular diffuse glow appears to emanate from the horizon into the sky. It's caused by a band of dust that lies between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter, scattering the light of the sun into the night sky. As the dust is in the same plane as the planets, it's found straddling an imaginary line we call the ecliptic, which is the path that the sun and the moon and the planets all follow across the sky. At this time of year, around the equinoxes, the ecliptic is at a very steep angle against the horizon and so the zodiacal light climbs higher into the sky which makes it a lot easier to see. In the northern hemisphere it's best seen in the east in the pre-dawn hours and in the southern hemisphere it's best seen in the west after sunset although as most people in the southern hemisphere live fairly close to the equator you can actually see it in the evening and the morning pretty much all year round anyway. It's also the best time of year to spot the Gegenschein which is a brighter bulge of zodiacal light at the anti-solar point, the point of the night sky that's directly opposite the sun. Because the sun's light is hitting these particles directly, they shine brighter. It's almost like having billions of tiny full moons in the sky. Keep an eye out for it in the constellation Aquarius. It's best viewed around midnight when it's going to be at its highest point in the sky, but you will need exceptionally dark skies with no light pollution and no moonlight. And using photographic techniques like tracking and stacking will help to unveil it better. Now with the nights darkening in the northern hemisphere, those at mid to high latitudes are eagerly awaiting their first sight of the Aurora Borealis. We're also entering solar maximum, which is part of a 10 year cycle on the the sun where there are more sunspots and more coronal mass ejections which cause the best and most potent auroral displays. And whilst the science behind it is not very clear or concise, there tends to be really amazing aurora performances around the equinoxes. So fingers crossed we'll have some amazing displays 
this month. Full moon this month is on the 29th, and as it's the closest full moon to the September equinox, it is known as the harvest moon, because the light of this moon helps the farmers to continue harvesting their crops as darkness falls. It's also a very well-loved moon because it rises during the twilight hours and stays very low on the horizon. And because of all the dust in the air from the farmers harvesting their crops, it tends to have a much stronger golden hue to it. And it's also a super moon because it occurs just 32 hours after lunar perigee, the closest distance between the moon and the earth on its orbit. So it will appear slightly larger and slightly brighter, and it's also the last super moon of 2023. So get out and enjoy it. As for the planets this month, Mars is practically lost in the evening twilight. Saturn can be found retrograding in Aquarius, spending most of the night arching high across the sky. Jupiter rises shortly after darkness falls and can be found in the constellation Aries, shining at a bright minus 2.7, and it begins retrograde motion early this month. Venus can be found rising in the pre-dawn hours in the constellation Cancer, shining at a blazingly bright minus 4.7. It's at its brightest on September the 18th. Towards the end of the month, Mercury can also be spotted in the morning twilight underneath Venus as it reaches greatest western elongation on the 22nd. And there's a nice opportunity to catch a thin crescent moon and Venus in the morning twilight on the 11th and maybe the 12th as well. And that's all I've got for you this month guys. Now on to the hashtag Wittens. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a target subject or theme for people to photograph for a chance to win a prize. If uploading to Twitter, use the hashtag Wittens and if uploading on Instagram, tag Wittens underscore Alan Wallace on your images with an actual tag. It's not enough to just mention us in the description. Third place wins a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Second place wins a Constellation hoodie. And first place wins a copy of my book Photographing the Night Sky. Last month's theme was Milky Way Core and there were a lot of amazing entries and demonstrations of insane technical ability. But in third place is this simple image captured by Oliver Shrive which really caught my eye. I love the warmth of the fire in an otherwise cool blue image and the micro adventure vibes of pitching your tent on a little island in the middle of a lake and kicking back listening to music enjoying the stars. I just loved the emotions and the memories that this image invoked in me. In second place was Astro Tupo with this atmospheric scene from the Italian Amps with a sprinkling of Perseid meteors to add a touch of magic. I love the composition and flow of this image and you just can't beat a good pointy mountain under the stars. In first place was Sarka with this image from a Roman amphitheater. I love the human figure giving those gladiator last man standing vibes but he's faced with the grand beauty of the Milky Way core and I love the natural edit on this image the white balance is great and he hasn't tried to force the Milky Way out or add any crazy contrast or clarity. Just a really nice natural ethereal image so well done. This month I'll be looking for any images of Comet Nishimura, the Zodiacal Light or the Aurora Borealis. So what are you most looking forward to this month? Let me know in the comments down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already and as always if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon I wish you good luck and clear skies. Thank you.